I didn't want the uh, video to be overly long. So, all right, we've gotten to the point where we're ready to mix our butter and our crumb ingredients. So, uh, mix all ingredients until crumbly. So, that's really all that there is to this section. Now, for those of you who bake breads, like, or pizza dough or something like that, then you would generally, I honestly, I like to use a fork, and I should have used a fork, but I'm already committed to the whisk, so I'm going to just go ahead and finish it out, but it's starting to crumble up, so this is something that you'd be used to, it's no big deal. Um, I need to go ahead because my oven has reached 375 the temperature and uh, I'm going to need to go ahead and put the batter in. You know, baking cake from scratch is not a big deal. It's basically you're using the same ingredients. Um, I mean, you know, you can buy cake flour. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, especially if you want to do that, but you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to buy cake flour. If you buy pre-sifted flour, which costs a little bit more, and a lot of people don't sift nowadays, you know, uh, because uh, it's not as convenient as buying it already done. This is almost ready, so I'm going to go ahead and pour my delicious-looking blueberry batter into this bunt pan. So, do try not to get it on the side. So, to continue on with the story of Haggai, you know, the Lord sent you know, he destroyed a lot of their crops, so, and their vines, so when they went to draw wine out, they didn't have as much, nothing that they expected to happen would happen. And, as I said, it's a very short book. Powerful. Um, I don't like the idea that we have what we call some of the prophets, a minor prophets. Excuse me, no word from God is minor. Every word from God is major. Therefore, every prophet that delivers the word of God is equal to all of the others. You know, Isaiah had a lot to say and he was a prophet of God over the years. But, and he prophesied about a lot of things, but the prophecy that Haggai received, the word from the Lord that he received concerning the temple being rebuilt was just as important because all the word of God is important and we cannot say what's more important than something else. That's what man does. We tend to qualify or quantify and categorize the Word of God and people in general. We want to measure them by our standards and God doesn't measure the same way. We should have learned that in the difference between God choosing David and the people choosing Saul. God is not looking at the outside appearance or the stature. He's looking at the inside in the heart. So what's my point? Well, before we even get into the obedience of the people, is that when God gives you instructions, you need to follow them. If you're not clear about the instructions, then you need to say, Lord, I, you know, I don't understand. Not understand what's happening, but understand what you're supposed to do. Okay, I think that's wrongly enough. All right, so, and 
it says um, 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 continue sprinkle with crumb topping. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna use quarter teaspoon. Okay, I won't be needing this, so I'm gonna use this to. Oh, you know what? I didn't make this recipe. I made a different one. I didn't actually make this one because there are like three of them in here that I really like. And I did not, I'm just, as I'm doing this, I did not make this particular recipe. So, <clears throat> this is where most of your sweetness should be concentrated. Uh, on your crumb topping and then with the glaze because you're going to be using powdered sugar on that. So the actual cake itself, I didn't, um, I didn't, if you notice, I didn't cut back on the sugar for that. Uh, but I did cut back on the sugar for this because this is the first thing that you're actually going to taste. Alright, so little bit and you know what that looks like a crumb cake to me all right so um 45 to 50 minutes in the oven all right i'm gonna set the timer and because for some reason that particular oven this particular oven always is just never right. Okay, half a cup of powdered sugar, quarter teaspoon of vanilla, one and a half to two teaspoons of hot water. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the powdered sugar ready. Um, we're all of the rest of these are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these up. And by the way, I got these from the Dollar Tree. Um, one dollar. <laughs> They come in all, you know, these these big sizes. Uh, this holds a whole five pound bag of flour plus. This holds a four pound bag of sugar plus. And here again is my whole wheat flour. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the powdered sugar going. And as I was saying, in my own lifetime, I have, I've come to the point now, and just a few weeks ago, I met a lady, uh, Gayla Holly, and um, she has a, a Facebook blog called Gayla's Magazine. And I, um, I met her at uh, the house church of Ryan and Sharon Knott in Euless, Texas. Now, I live in Hearst, We're, and that's in the, for those of you who don't Texas, don't feel bad. <laughs> um, oops, I don't want that much. But yeah, I think I'm going to cut this back considerably, too. Um, yes, um, Hearst is closer to Fort Worth, so we're in the DFW Metroplex. And um, Hearst, Euless, and Bedford are three like tri cities that are like connected because you can cross the street and be in one or the other. <laughs> All of them uh, connect. Hearst connects to to Bedford and Euless. So, but in any case, uh, I met her and her husband there, and we talked after uh, her husband spoke. And she just briefly, you know, spoke a, a few encouraging words. And I was very impressed by some of the things that she said. Um, I had been going to this house meeting for a while, and then I stopped going because the Lord told me to, um, he opened the door for me to go and do some study on Erwin Baxter's Understanding the End Time, which was, a 14 week course and then they added a bonus four week course uh, on the salvation package and I found it extremely helpful uh, in putting a 
lot of things into perspective as far as ministry. So, again, what we're, we're talking, and the Lord had, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because when I was still at the church meeting, uh, undergoing the classes, you know, I knew the classes were going to be over, and I knew they were going to be offering a different set of classes. So, you know, I was like, okay, Lord, you know, he says, no, no, don't go to those. And I was like, um, okay. I've learned not to question him, but there was a time when I would have been like, okay, well, I don't understand, and why, and blah, 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 and why do I have to go back to the knots, and, you know, I feel like I'm going backwards. But the Lord let me know that there was a connection. I was going to make a connection there. And the very first time I went, there she was. And she came right over to me <laughs> after it was, you know, the, the uh, present, you know, after the message was over and started talking to me. And I was like, okay, you know. And as we were talking, and I recorded the conversation, which I record all over, but there was so much background chatter. That is really, really hard to hear. Uh, so I'm going to have to filter, edit that uh, recording and filter a lot of that out. But we were, she said, out of all the women in this room, and there were a lot of women, women way outnumbered the men. Uh, she says, I came over here to talk to you. And I was like, okay. Because uh, she started talking about daughters of the king. And my pastor, Floyd Scott, of Force of Faith, Raymond Ministry, he has been ministering on the identity of women. So when she spoke briefly about the daughters of the king, I was very intrigued by what she was saying because it was some of the same teaching that I've been under for quite some time. Uh, the whole point of any message from God is that you understand what he's trying to convey. She sat down and she started talking to me about, she says, you need to get on social media. You know, she says, you need to think about devotionals. And she makes little one, two, three minute devotionals. I was like, wow. <laughs> and she says, sometimes it's a one line. But, you know, she didn't know. She didn't know me. And she doesn't know that I already have post. I already have, you know, Soul Rama, uh Ministries, um, at Gmail. That's our email address. That I have Soul Rama, Soul Rama's Kingdom Authority on the Facebook page. And that we have Believers in Christ, Kingdom Authority, uh, a Google community. She didn't know that I already, you know, do all of this stuff. And she was just saying that, you know, she said, you, she says, because I was thinking, you know, I have my personal, you know, page and blog and whatever. You know, I said, I was thinking more of consolidating everything into the ministry. She says, no. She says, you need as, uh, as many uh, hooks in the water as you can. And I said, well, I was kind of thinking about a net, you know, because you throw a net out, you catch more, you know, fish at one time. But, um, you know, but she says, well, yeah, but she said, you want to throw, if, even if you're going to throw out a net, you can't put out a small one. If you want to catch a big net, you know, a broader spectrum. So spreading it out a lot, a lot further. And I said, okay. So she wrote down her, um, all of the different social media uh, sites that she was on and her websites and things like that and uh, she's the founder of Moms Against Hunger and she travels all over the world you know helping to feed children and you know teaching women and empowering women which is something that I'm very very much in favor of um, I know that we always have to know within ourselves what God has called us to. We have to understand what He wants us to do. The biggest issue that most of us face is that when we hear from God, we start to reason on our own selves how we're going to do whatever it is that He's asked us to do. And the ability to accomplish all the tasks that God assigns to me, He's already placed within me. Now, um, I have
have learned to do things that I never thought that I would, be, that I used to years ago when I knew I needed to do them. I'd be looking for people. I'd be, you know, and I found out what somebody knew how to do this, 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 or that, you know, graphic artist, and people knew how to, you know, edit film and things like that. I used to try and, you know, recruit them, explain to them what I wanted to do and things like that. And they, I got a lot of, chatter <laughs> and no one ever actually helped um this is 2017 so in the early 90s early mid early to mid 90s i had a newsletter that i published and this it was it was not easy because i had to type it up take pictures put them on a piece of paper make copies of them you know you know old says and typesetting kind of deal you know, in my, uh, I had turned my living room into an office. And I began to publish, I began to um, get the tapes from our church of different people speaking, and I would transcribe those tapes into a message. And sometimes, you depending on how long the message was, it could be three or four parts. And I, people began to hear about it. I began to mail them all. I had a mailing list. And I mailed them to people, and I lived in St. Louis, and I mailed them to people all over the country. And people began to come to me. Hey, I heard about this. How? And I, they were asking me, how can they get involved in that? I mean, people who were established in the ministry, established ministers and evangelists were asking me how they could become a part, or how could they get their message out there, how, you know, if I could do that. And I was like, wow, you know, and I was like, well, you know, sure. And I did it for a long while until the Lord, you know, pulled me out of it. And I was like, okay, all right, well, well oh, we're done. And the expenses, you know, I was responsible for the envelopes, the paper, the printing, the stamps, everything came out of my pocket. And it wasn't a big deal, but I learned how to do it. And I learned how to do it in such a way to where it looked nice. It looked professional. Uh, I did. I couldn't afford color photos and images and things like that. But I, I mean, I learned that years ago, you know, t over 20 years ago. So doing this stuff on the web is basically like a walk in the park for understanding the format of it. The video things are a little different. Uh, but I have learned, and, and you know, I just listen. The Holy Spirit says, I want you to do this. And I'm like, Okay, I'm sure you're going to show me how to do that. And he has. He has been faithful. The Lord has been faithful every step of the way. When he gave me this book of Haggai back in 2013, and we're going to continue this on um, another segment, he began to show me that when we try to do things our own way, he says, I bought, here is verse 11 of chapter 1. I brought drought on the land, on its hills, grain fields, vineyards, and olive orchards, on every crop and ground, uh, on every crop the ground produces, on people and animals, on everything you try to grow. And I have highlighted everything. <laughs> okay, so when we are out of place, with God's plan and purpose for our life. And his plan and purpose are not always the same thing. A plan is, is, is a big picture. A purpose is singly, this is what you need to do. And I look at it from one assignment to another. And when the Lord tells, gives us an assignment and we don't do it, and things start happening in our lives, it's because he removes his hand of protection from us. And he doesn't, and back in those days, he did this. But you, today, as a believer in Christ, he can simply remove his hand of protection away from you and allow the enemy to do whatever he wants, like he did with Job. The Lord didn't do anything to Job bad. He only blessed him and trusted him because he knew Job's heart. Satan did all of that stuff to Job. Killed his children, 
you know, family, you know, all of his family, you know, destroyed his crops and, you know, his business, his livelihood and everything. He, Satan did all that. God didn't do that. But he removed his protection. And, and the enemy, so without God's protection, the enemy can do anything to us that he wants to do. So right now, today, if you're facing some issues in your life, if your circumstance, because our circumstance does not change, but the situation changes. And we may go from bad to worse, or we may go from worse to worse, or we may go from one thing to another, but we're still involved pretty much in the same circumstance. And why is that? Because there are some things that God needs to deal with us on in our lives. And the most crucial thing is obedience. If we understand what God wants us to do, we don't have to worry about getting it done. He's already empowered us to do it. We just need to look to him to be able to do that. And that's the most important lesson that I have learned over the years. God is teaching me that it's not about how much you think you have. Because we, if we think in the same terms of the world, we are never going to think we have enough. We're never going to think we have what we should have. Part of being of the seed of faith, of Abraham's seed, the seed of faith, which every born-again believer is of the seed of faith, who was born a Gentile. You know, I am from the Gentile believers, but I am a child of God now. I have been grafted in, you know, the wild olive branch that was grafted in, okay? Um, but what we need to understand is that whatever God has told us to do, we have to do it. Check yourself. Check to see what, it, and, and for me, I like to write down so I can keep a record. When the Lord tells me to do something, if I write it down, then I can come back and say whether I did it or not. You know, I can know that, oh, yes, you did it, or, oh, you know, wow, you know what, you didn't do that. And uh, I, I, I failed to mention, I'm reading from the Good News uh, Bible, today's English uh, version. That's what I was reading from. And in case you were wondering what version I was using. And it's my primary Bible right now. And has been and will continue to be until, you know, the Lord tells me something different. I'm going to have to step away from this stove because it's hot. Um, uh, I should have, I set the timer for 55 minutes because, like I said, it generally doesn't cook properly. So I always have to have a few extra minutes on there. Um, but in any case... I can't stress it enough for us to be, especially right now, today, with the times that we live in, that God is calling us to obedience in the strictest terms. He's calling us and crying out to us and reaching out to us to trust him under every circumstance and situation that we face to trust him completely and totally because God has got to be our source. God is not our resource. He's not someone that we need to run to when we want something. At some point, that gets old. It gets old for human beings to imagine how old that has gotten for him. Faith in God's ability to provide whatever he said for you, that's fine, but you need to have faith and reverence for God himself first. Because if you're always coming to him for something, for his stuff, then how much do you really love him? And I can tell you from personal experience, I thought I loved God, but he told me straight out, no, you don't. He said, you don't love me. You don't even know what love is. And I beg to differ, but he was absolutely right. And within the last seven years, he has been really teaching me what love is. And you can't share love and show love unconditionally until you have received that love. So the, the scripture is very true. We love him because he first loved us. But the part that's not true for most of us is that we love him part because we don't. We love God's stuff. And that needs to change. And the beginning of change is through obedience and understanding. 
blind obedience sometimes, yeah, that's what it takes. But there's some things that God's not going to explain to you. You're just going to have to trust him. So there comes a point in your life for every believer that you want to trust God unconditionally for whatever it is that he needs to work in your life. Not what you think, not what you want, but what he says. I'm going to close right now with that. We'll be back when the uh, <laughs> when the uh, blueberry cake is done, uh, and I will uh, be adding the glaze to it. Uh, I think it needs to cool or whatever, so that's going to take a while. But we'll be back with that and show you a picture of the finished product. I thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that what I've said has been a blessing to you. I hope that what I said uh, is a comfort to you, knowing that there's someone else who's going through what you're going through, that there's someone else who understands a person that understands. One of the things that I told Gayla Holly was that, I said, you know what? I said, I, I, I tell the Lord, you know, I just talk to him about what's going on with me, how I feel and things like that. I said, but you know what? I said, it feels so good to actually be able to talk to a person, a human, you know, being. God put that in us. He built that in us, that of, of wanting that fellowship, that touch. That's why the woman was created. Because it wasn't good for the man to be alone. And it's not good for any person to be alone. And I don't mean in the sense of being husband and wife or you know, being a spouse to someone. I don't mean that. But I mean having someone that you can actually sit down, talk to, take their hand, you know, get a hug or whatever it is from that other human soul. God has built that into us. that we And we do need that. And I thank him because he did uh, recognize because I'd ask about it, you know, but I was like, okay, you know, the Lord, but I love you and I appreciate you and blah, 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 blah. But, and then I was like, I just, I stopped because I was like, okay, well, you know, if that's what he wants, but to be able to talk to someone on the level that I was able to talk to her and share some of my innermost thoughts and heart felt feelings that I only share with the Lord, it was so amazing. And I felt so good. And I felt so special because God had sent her straight over to me. And everything that she said was encouraging and uplifting. And uh, a lot of it was confirmation. And of the things that she was saying was things that I was doing and that, you know, I need to make a decision about. And I put that decision before the Lord. Lord, I was thinking about doing this, this, or that. What do you think? What should I do? Sometimes he tells me right off, nope. Keep doing what you're doing or, you know, whatever. Or And then sometimes he'll tell me things that he wants me to do. And I'll be wanting to do them. And I'll feel like, okay, I haven't done that yet. He said, it's not, don't worry, it's not time. Because when it's time for me to do something else or add something on, I know it. And I'll, he'll begin to have me, I'll, it'll come up and I'll start seeing it. Then I'll start looking into it. And for me, I research and look into stuff. And before, uh, and I, but because I've seen something that caught my attention because it's something that the Lord had said to me previously. So that's just how he deals with me. But he deals with each and every one of us on an individual basis. He meets us where we are. So wherever you are right now today, know that God has not forgotten you. Know that we are here for you. I mentioned earlier that we are on Facebook. So Ramos Kingdom Authority, it's a community. A page, a community. Uh, you can email us at soulramaministries at gmail.com. We have a community on Google, Believers in Christ, Kingdom Authority. And we have a, a Soul Rama Ministries blog on Google, on Blogger. Uh, if, you're, if you really want to find out who we are, what we stand for, get some information on uh, some of our teaching, Look up the hashtag, Believers in Christ. That I, and that hashtag goes in most everything that we post. But I don't mean just every time we post something, we put that in there. No, if it has to do with the Believers in Christ 
about our lifestyle, about God, what God requires of us, about our authority, you are going to see that hashtag. So it's going to cover, it covers our life, period. So you can look at that hashtag. For those of you who are not familiar with using hashtags, it's the number sign on your keyboard, the number sign. And it's all one word, believers in Christ. So if you type that into Google search, it'll, it should bring up a lot of what we said. Oh, and I, I forgot, we're on Twitter as well. at Soul Rama on Twitter. So we use the hashtag on Twitter. We use it on Facebook. We use it on, um, on Google. So in a lot of the people, you know, we try to encourage them to use it when they're talking about something that has to do with what God has, the abilities that God has given us or things that we're looking for and we need from him. We appreciate your feedback. Uh, we appreciate any comments, uh, suggestions, concerns that you have, and questions. Oftentimes, I, uh, and as I've begun to do, when we get questions, I will address them on video. Because it's not just one person that has that question. If I feel, if I'm led of the Spirit, I will address that question on video. And we go and see what the Word of God says about it. Because when it's all said and done, it is the Word that we have to live by. And I mean the full, un unadulterated, unfiltered, uncensored Word. It's not my opinion, it's what it is, what the Word of God says. Thank you so much once again for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast, wherever you're going, or if you're viewing this video, I thank you so much for taking the time to listen to what we have to say here at Soul Raymond Ministries. Have a wonderful day.